ATLPW50PB fully manual belt drive turntable with integrated motor speed sensor, lightweight carbon fiber tone arm, and black ATVM95E dual moving magnet cartridge is a precision instrument designed for optimal high fidelity performance. Before you can use your turntable, it needs to be set up. Carefully unpack the turntable and make certain that you have all of the parts and accessories. Place the turntable on a firm level surface. The drive belt is pre-installed on the platter. The red ribbon is used to install the drive belt over the brass motor pulley. Carefully remove the tape securing the red ribbon and push both ribbon ends through the platter opening. Place the platter with drive belt on the spindle and make certain it is fully seated. Rotate the platter by hand until the platter opening with the red ribbon exposes the brass motor pulley. The brass pulley is in the upper left hand corner of the turntable opposite the tone arm. While holding the platter steady, use the red ribbon to lift the belt away from the platter and guide it over the motor pulley. Once the belt is seated in the pulley's groove, verify the belt is not twisted. Place the turntable mat on the platter. Next, assemble the tone arm. Carefully remove the twist tie used to secure the tone arm during shipment. Remove any protective tape or packing and secure the tone arm to its rest with the locking clamp. Attach the head shell cartridge assembly by inserting it into the tone arm socket. While holding the head shell in position, rotate the head shell locking ring counterclockwise. As the ring rotates, it pulls the head shell into its seated position. Tighten carefully. Next, install the counterweight. Make certain the stylus force gauge dial is facing toward the front. As you rotate the counterweight, it threads onto the tone arm. Now we will balance the tone arm, set the tracking force, and adjust the anti-skate for the VM95E cartridge. This important process allows the cartridge to track properly, and failure to do so can cause the stylus to wear prematurely and possibly damage your records. First, set the anti-skate adjustment knob to zero. Carefully remove the stylus protective cover by sliding it straight forward off the front of the cartridge, exposing the stylus. Lower the tone arm lift lever, and while gently holding the head shell to stabilize the tone arm, release the locking clamp. At this point, the tone arm is unbalanced and can easily swing. Be careful not to damage the stylus by dragging the cartridge across the platter mat. Next, while gently holding the head shell, rotate the counterweight until the tone arm is horizontally balanced. It should hover freely just above the platter and not touch the platter surface. Once the tone arm is balanced, without touching the counterweight, carefully move the tone arm over to its rest and secure it with the locking clamp. Now set the stylus tracking force. Every cartridge has a recommended tracking force. Setting the tracking force too light can cause the stylus to skip out of the groove on loud or dynamic passages. Setting it too heavy can cause excessive wear on both the stylus and records, resulting in audio distortion or channel imbalance. The recommended tracking force for the VM95E cartridge is 2 grams. The stylus force gauge dial is on the front of the counterweight. Marked with numbers and lines indicating different tracking forces, the dial rotates independently from the counterweight. Without turning the counterweight, carefully rotate the stylus force gauge dial until the zero on the dial lines up with the center line mark on the top of the tone arm. Now set the tracking force by rotating the entire counterweight assembly in a counterclockwise direction. As you rotate the counterweight, note the gauge dial rotates with it. Continue turning the counterweight until the two on the gauge dial lines up with the center line mark on the tone arm. You now have set the tracking force correctly for the VM95E cartridge. If you ever change out the cartridge, remember, you must rebalance the tone arm and reset the tracking force to the value required by the new cartridge. The turntable has an anti-skate force adjustment. This small outward force is applied to the tone arm and compensates for the natural skating force that pulls the tone arm toward the center of the record. For best performance, during normal operation, set the anti-skate adjustment to the same value as the cartridge tracking force. For best results, the turntable should be level. Using a small bubble level, adjust the turntable's feet as needed. With the turntable assembled and leveled, power and audio connections can be made. First, connect the AC power adapter cable to the turntable and plug the adapter into a convenient AC outlet. Next, plug the dual RCA cable into the output connectors on the turntable.
The turntable offers a traditional phono output along with a built-in magnetic phono preamp providing an RIAA equalized line level output. This makes it compatible with traditional phono inputs on amplifiers and receivers, along with AUGs or line level inputs on powered speakers, amplifiers, and other audio devices. If your audio device has its own RIAA magnetic phono preamp, simply set the phono line output selector to phono, bypassing the turntable's internal preamp. If you are connecting to an AUGS type line level input or powered speakers, place the output selector in the line position to use the turntable's internal phono preamp. If your audio device has a separate ground terminal, connect the spade lug on the dual RCA cable to the grounding lug on your audio component and the turntable to help minimize hum. The turntable comes with a clear plastic dust cover designed to protect the turntable when not in use. It should remain off when records are playing. For more information, visit us on the web at www.audio-technica.com.